Hi, so welcome to this episode of History Hunters. I'm going to be doing a show about the filming locations of the 1974 movie Dirty Mary Crazy Larry that was shot all over Central California in the fall of 1973. It was a 1974 blockbuster produced by Fox Pictures. It actually wasn't expected to do very well, but it turned out to be the best grossing picture of 1974. The first place that I'm going to visit is this location here in Sonora, California. It's where the opening scenes are, where Deke Summers goes to pick up Larry Rader, played by Peter Fonda, pick him up at this apartment where he's just slept with Susan George. They are going to sort some money from the local Save Mart store. So for the filming of the movie, they put up this sign on the building behind me. It's, it was called the Fairview Motor Apartments. And then Deke Summers, played by Adam Rourke, comes up here in the 1966 Chevy Impala to pick up Peter Fonda, who has just slept with Susan George. He walks out, leaving Susan George in the bed. And then they start up the motor, and it wakens up Susan George. She's very upset by him leaving like that. But let's go up there and check out that building, which is where those scenes were shot. When the opening scene, you see this little retaining wall here and a cat moves out of the way and it was shot right down here. And then the Impala pulls up. Now that post there, that crash post, obviously has been installed since then. Yeah, so Adam Rourke pulls up here with his car and uh, he comes out of that door. As he opens the door, you see Susan George back there asleep. She's awakened by the loud rev of the motor. The car is here. And then Peter Fonda comes out. He's grinning because he's going to go rob the grocery store. So he stands there right by that post. And then Mary sticks her head out of either that window there or this window here. But this place looks almost identical to the way it looked back in 73. Oh. All right, so I'm following the same route in Sonora that Peter Fonda and Adam Rourke took to the grocery store so they could rob it. This particular scene was shot in the evening, so it will look a little different than right now, and it's before noon, but this area has not changed very much at all. Now, it was right in this area where Peter Fonda turns to the Adam Rourke's character and says, nice little town, and Adam Rourke replies, any town's a nice little town and you nail abroad. They're planning their $150,000 extortion from the store manager so they could buy a new race car. They're both down and out on their luck. NASCAR racers and they need a newer car so they can compete a little better. Okay, so this is the segment that appears prominently in the film. It's where a lot of the police action was filmed after the extortion. Only the exterior of the store shots were made here. The other location that was used uh, for behind the store was shot in Oakdale, California. However, I need to point out a couple of things. This location right here is exactly where Susan George gets out of the pickup after she follows Peter Fonda to this location and she sticks her hat out of her pickup and says, hey, Oh. But then you'll see Peter Fonda walking to the store in this direction, this way. The bricks match up to the one in the film. And right about here, you see Peter Fonda walking past the corner and she says, Hey, and there's a couple that watches, looks her direction. This little shed here has been added, but he would have walked right around the corner here into the store. Also in the film, you will see approximately in this area where Peter Fonda makes a telephone call from a phone booth. He just watches the delivery of cash from the armored car, says the delivery's been made, makes his phone call to Deke, who's at the manager's home, where he's kidnapped or holding hostage his wife and daughter. They're holding them hostage so that the manager will fork over the money in the safe at the store. 
but it was right in this location where the phone booth is. In the background of the scenery on the phone, you will see that is a fabric store back there, but it's now a round table pizza. Uh, again, I don't know if that phone booth was a prop or if there was an actual phone booth out here. Now, if you had been here in September of 1973, this shopping center would have been here, but it would have looked vastly different. But there was a lot of activity going on right down here at the building at the end of this shopping center. So I'm here in Oakdale, California, outside of this fitness center. But in 1973, this was Don Quick Market. This is where all the indoor scenes were shot from the movie with Peter Fonda and Roddy McDowell was the store manager. So in the film, you'll see them pulling up to the Save Mart in Sonora, California. None of the scenes were shot inside of that store up there. All the scenes were shot here and there's a reason for that. This store had an above floor manager's unit that offered a good scene of the whole market back in 73. And that's where they filmed the scenes with Roddy McDowell. I'm gonna try to go in there and show you what this place looks like now. Again, it's changed quite a bit since 49 years have passed. It was right over here that Peter Fonda had approached the manager's office, which had some stairs at the end here. It means they would have shot the office up here. About the only thing that maybe hasn't changed are the beams up there. You see the wooden beams up there are pretty much the same beams that were here in 73. Yeah, but that's pretty cool, huh? A lot of people think that those scenes were shot in Sonora, but they were actually shot here in Oakdale, California. They did a lot of scenes back here behind the Don Quick Market. Now, Peter Fonda came to the store. He was gonna extort money from the manager of the store. He parks behind this store here. When he returns, he finds out that Susan George is in his car. She's an unwelcome sight. He tried to ditch her. It was just a one night stand. And so she's laying out in the seat. She says, hi, a-hole. He noticed the keys are not in the car. So he said, where's my keys? She said, hey. You owe me 50 bucks. She was right about here. That's when he says, how do you figure? And she says, well, listen, you got to figure. If you treat a decent girl like a whore, she ought to be paid like one, right? She then throws the keys into the dumpster that was right over here. This was the loading dock to the store. So there's a lot of publicity stills with Peter Fonda in the back of the store here with Coke bottles in the back. It would have been right here where you see this pad this was an enclosed area. That's changed. Then he finds that he's in trouble because his escape route has been blocked by construction equipment and also been blocked by a delivery wagon that pulls up. And he decides the only way out is to go between the vehicles, up this trailer, jump the trailer, and then he escapes that way. But this lot back here was all dirt at the time. <laughs> Now, interestingly, I think that building over there, we're next to the Oakdale Irrigation District, but I think that building was here at the time. And you'll see the background of some of the scenes as well. So yeah, cool Hollywood history back here shot in 1973 with Peter Fonda. His dad, of course, was Henry Fonda, one of the greatest American actors of American film. It was interesting later to watch the movie and see all these places that I knew had been filmed in our town and in the area, the Sonora area, and I recognized most of the scenes that we saw. That was very cool. So in 1973, I was probably 12 years old. I was actually living in this town. And the reason that we found out that the movie was shot here was because the local newspaper, the Oakdale Leader, had, had pictures of it and told the story about what was taking place here. We actually had shopped here, but we didn't shop there that much, so we missed the action completely. But I think it's pretty interesting that Roddy McDowell, who was a very famous and popular actor, he appears as the store manager in this film. 
And I think he does a really horrible job of acting. This film probably has some of the worst acting I've ever seen in my life. In fact, some people have watched it lately and it's like, man, the acting is just horrible. Those were the keys to my grandfather's pickup. Okay, now I'm walking up Thiel Street in Sonora and I'm gonna show you where Peter Fonda drops off Adam Rohr to go kidnap the manager family. So this is it. This is the intersection of Thiel and Beretta Streets. The 66 Impala driven by Peter Fonda comes right up this steep road here and stops there on the incline and lets Adam Rourke out and then he makes his way off to the left side of the scene here. Uh, apparently he's being dropped off to go break into the manager's house and kidnap the wife and the daughter and to begin the extortion plot. However, those scenes were shot inside of a Stockton house. After they get their money, Peter Fonda comes back here and picks up Adam Rourke. He finds Mary's in the back seat and uh, he's not too pleased about the fact that she's hitching along the ride. That was shot right here. This has changed quite a bit since then. All right, so I am pulling off of South Airport Way here in Stockton, just south of Charter Way. I'm going to the Stockton Fairgrounds, or the San Joaquin County Fairgrounds, because this is one of the filming locations that I'm gonna check out. I really owe a debt of gratitude to the people on the Stockton History Facebook page, because when I put out a call for the filming locations of Dirty Mary Crazy Larry, uh, I asked exactly where the sheriff's substation was, or the sheriff's station where Vic Morrow was directing the apprehension strategy to get Peter Fonda, who was out running wild in that car, in the Charger. And uh, I was told it was right here. This building, or possibly a building prior to it, this is where all of the scenes were shot, where Vic Morrow was going in and out of the police building. And there's several scenes where the Sheriff's deputies are out here in cowboy hats. What the giveaway was is that there is a motel over there that's in the background. And also there's a rather um, distinguished sign over there. It's the 7-Eleven sign. That sign is still there, but it's been repurposed and redesigned. But this would have been right here the filming location where all the sheriff's office scenes were shot now i've been unable to determine whether or not this is a new building or if it's been a replacement building the filming was out here in 1973 i believe it was the fall of 1973. also the veteran actor kenneth toby was in here he was kind of a, an adversary of vic morrow So I found another filming location from the movie. If you remember the first car, as they're doing the, some of the first chase scenes, he pulls out in front of a bus. It's a crazy scene, it was a crazy stunt, but it was in this intersection here of Highway 26 and Weimar Road. And I'm pretty sure that Hospital Road up there is where they did a lot of the up and down road chase scenes early in the film as well. Now alert people will notice if you freeze frame this, this scene here where he pulls out in front of the bus that off to the side of the road is another set of tire tracks which would indicate that they had already done the stunt ahead of time and maybe they were just seeing if it would work but man you talk about a gutsy scene to be able to pull out in front of a bus like that impeccable timing because if you didn't get it right it could be disastrous. Sarah and I have just left Stockton, California, and we're headed to Farmington. We are approaching Farmington, where they filmed the store scene where Susan George is dropped off. They plan to ditch her, and uh, they find out they have to come back and get her because she has a map that they desperately need to find their way around. It's too bad the store, I think it was called Ogilvy's. Too bad it's not here anymore. I think this has been closed for some time. We're in the community of Farmington. We are right where they filmed the scene. Peter Fonda was in the car right here. 
Susan George gets out, comes up the stairs here. I think this, this has been changed a little bit. And she goes into the store right there. Sarah's going to demonstrate. I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this was a store back in 73. It's Ogilvy's. And right here was a bench. And Susan George, they drop Susan George off. She eats an ice cream and then they take off and they come back. They find her here eating the ice cream right in front of this window. And the bench said Deegan's Funeral Home, which is actually a funeral home that's in... Um, the town of Escalon. It's, the bench is gone, but yeah, that scene was shot right here. And then Peter Fonda takes off in that direction there. That mobile gas station wasn't here at the time. Take off that direction towards Stockton. There's also a picture of Peter Fonda and Adam Rourke and Susan George sitting right here. Obviously they've added the rail since then. They've also probably changed the flooring a little bit. Maybe it's the original flooring. I think that this sign here would have been some good advice for Peter Fonda in the movie. It says slow down, this is a neighborhood, not a racetrack. Spoiler alert. Of course, he gets killed in the film. So we're approaching it the way the car would have approached the jump in the film. This area looks pretty much the same. I think some of the trees have grown up quite a bit a little bit greater. But yeah, the crossing arm comes down here and he blows right through it. The bridge has already been lifted. There's the drawbridge uh, signal arms come down and he would have jumped it right here and went flying through the air. And hitting over here and almost going out of control over here. So even though the signs say no parking, I'm going to do it anyway, just so I can give you all a good view of this location here. River looks rather inviting. It's kind of hot today. It says no jumping or fishing from the bridge. And you can see this is where the bridge separates. And the car would have landed just over there a little bit. I understand that this hasn't been used in years. I'm not sure why. But yeah, that's where the guy was up there looking, fixing to raise the bridge for a ship coming in. Peter Fonda is coming full barrel, decides to blow through the crossing arms. And uh, again, that was done by a stunt driver. It's a busy road. That last truck that rumbled through here scared the bejesus out of me. Um, it just was really loud. So sometimes you just have to do a little detective work. I was really curious where the location was where Vic Murrow gets in the helicopter. And my detective work led me right here. There's a reason for it. When the helicopter comes in from this direction, you will see this sign. 
It is still here 49 years later. It's a sign for the Cook Ranch. You'll see it in the scene. Where James Gavin, the helicopter pilot, pulls in right here and picks up Vic Murrow, who's standing right in the dead center of that road, which is Escalon Belota Road. This is Copperopolis Road. This will take you up to Copperopolis. This is Highway 26. Vic Murrow stood right here to be picked up by the helicopter 49 years ago. It's just incredible. And some of the stunts that he pulled, he went underneath those wires back there. It's just incredibly dangerous. But they do such dangerous things. Now, I should point out that Vic Murrow actually died in a helicopter crash in Hollywood or somewhere down south. He was on the ground. He was filming a movie. I think it was called Twilight Zone. He was carrying two Vietnamese children in this nighttime scene, and one of the explosives blew the rotors of the helicopter off. The helicopter crashed. The rotors went right through Vic Morrow, killed him instantly. Very tragic incident. Vic Morrow was killed today as he ran along a hillside during a shooting sequence for his latest movie. It was a freak accident. A helicopter involved in the movie crashed into them. They died instantly. This is the town of Lockford. I don't think anything was shot here, but we're gonna go up the road here to Clements where there's a building that I want you to see. So yes, we made it to 6th Street, and this is the Dutton Flats scene here. Um, I think at the time there was a railroad track that went through here, and I believe it went right through here. It's now a private driveway. That's where the train tracks were. The charger comes around the corner there in that long shot, and makes its way up here. So the charger comes around this way and makes its way up to here and then they turn into the flea market scene and uh, I know that Peter Fonda and Susan George and Adam Rourke were in that big buzz of activity with the flea market. This is where all the flea market scenes were shot. And all that's here now is abandoned businesses and abandoned vehicle. If you watch the movies, some of the buildings here have changed. In the background, there's some buildings that appear in the film that are not actually here today. They've been bulldozed. But it looks like this was a restaurant at one time. If you will recall, they traded out their 1966 Chevy Impala for the souped up Charger. It was in this location where they stole the vehicle. I believe it was right in here, but I could be mistaken. It would have been right here where the Charger takes off between the two cars, the deputy's vehicle has the door open and takes it right off. Stuns the law enforcement officers and they take off and go to the left. They used a lot of locals for the filming scenes. So, you know, they needed a crowd, so they just used locals. And down here is the historic Lone Star Mill. It says Robinson's Purina Chows and G.A. Chrisman warehouse of mixed feeds, grain, coal, and hay. So in this parking lot was the scene where she wants to buy something for Larry Summers, who's played by Peter Fonda. It's a little funky hood ornament. Somebody else comes up and snatches it away from her and buys it. She's pissed off and she wants to go up and she steals it. She steals it from the guy who took it from her. And then that guy goes to the police and then it's on. The police are notified and they're looking for the little blonde and they suspect it's Mary. Mary has kind of a reputation as a girl about town because she's grabbed by a bunch of the local roughies and that also draws attention to the police. So now I'm gonna take you over to Linden, the town of Linden, and show you where the bar scenes were shot and also where they shot pool. I have to tell you that finding the location of this scene has been proven a little difficult because I'm not sure exactly if I'm in the right location, but 
in the movie you'll see uh, Larry driving down this country road and then this police officer sees him one of the sheriffs sees him and then they take off on a chase and somehow the sheriff ends up going up the embankment and flipping over and of course Larry gets away but somebody has told me that it's on North Clements Road which we're now on it looks like this area right here is where this scene was shot and if that's the case then there's a billboard that was alongside the road that the sheriff's car goes right through and I believe it was also right here All right so now I'm rolling through the town of Linden a lot has changed in the 50 years since the filming of the movie but there's a lot that's also the same. This F&M bank is actually seen in the movie. These commercial buildings coming up here on the right, uh, Peter Fonda is rolling by those as well. You can see those in the film. It's now a Pizza Plus. If we continue on down to Linden, we'll come to the bar, the landing spot. The Peter Fonda talked about and he pulls in here and there's a major scene shot right here on East 26 and Flood Road it's right here the famous landing spot for Peter Fonda and they pull up right here to the side like I'm doing right now walk around the building here to the front now these oleanders weren't here at the time but like I said it's been 50 almost 50 years but this is the front and Peter Fonda and Susan George and Adam Rourke came out of this bar I wonder if that door is original now the crazy thing is that it's all busted up and we can see inside the bar where they filmed all the scenes here off to, off to the right there's a door and it goes back to the room where they played pool and they did some scenes back there crazy to think that uh, everything is busted open like that Right about here, there was a sign. You'll see it inside the, in the scene. Now, Peter Fonda and Susan George and Adam Rourke have disagreements in this building. They're playing pool and Peter Fonda's character is just a jerk in this film. There's a sign, he reads it, no swearing, no spitting, no rescue women. It actually read risque, but he said rescue women. So that pretty much sums up your act, Mary. She says, oh yeah? What about the sign in the window? About you? And it says, out to lunch. A lot of people have caught in the background that that sign changes and it's not supposed to. It just magically changes through scene changes. Now it was also right here they had a pump. They had a gas pump and that's where Peter Fonda is gassing up. And right at that moment, right there off of Flood Road comes a cop. Pulls right around here, turns on his lights and sirens. The chase is on, but Peter Fonda doesn't wait for the old man to take the gas nozzle out of his car and he takes off in that direction right there and then of course the buffoon police they always portray the police as the buffoons crashes into a building over here and i'm not sure if this is the same building or if it was a fake building that they crashed into but that would have been right here and one of the things that is still here that was here back in 73 is that building right there it's now blue diamond Almonds of California. So I am on Peltier Road. I just turned off of I-5, turned on to Peltier Road, and it's going to turn into Blossom Road. These are where the scenes were shot of Peter Fonda being chased 
uh, and he goes up a canal bank to try to get away from the deputy, and he ends up making a turn into the deputy, and the deputy's car goes into the canal, and we're coming up to that area. So I'm now on Blossom Road. This is where the scenes were all shot, where Peter Fonda is being chased by the sheriff's deputy. The car goes up on the canal bank, a little bit higher than the the police car and he continues the kind of dueling and then Peter Fonda comes back out on the road and then they have a where they bump each other well all these scenes were shot right here on this road now right where I've positioned my car is the spot where the charger goes up above the road here and you can't even see where it's a road anymore it's all overgrown but this would have been where the charger entered this very narrow area here and then he reconnects down the road and at the end of this road is a canal and that's where the sheriff's deputy ends up in the drink backwards okay so this would be the the bank that the charger rides on above the road as the sheriff is chasing after it And then right up here, where you can see the bank coming together with the road, that's where the charger comes back on, right here. Now the chase continues. The two vehicles are slamming against each other. And at some point along this stretch, Susan George says, I think someone's knocking on the door. And then he says something smart alecky about it. And then right up here, you see him make this maneuver where he takes his car and he crashes it right into the sheriff's deputy's vehicle and it goes into the canal right up here and I'll get out and show you all about that. I do have to say after coming out here that this really hasn't changed hardly at all in 50, almost 50 years. There's a shot this area where the cars make contact. The sheriff's deputy car goes here sliding backwards. Uh, of course this house wasn't here at the time and the car goes in the water right here backwards. But what the dead giveaway is in the background of the movie, you'll see that metal barn over there. It's still here. It's the same barn. As you can see how wide that is. Um, and the car ends up, I think, right about there. Somebody's coming up here with a boat. That's pretty cool. I am almost positive that this bridge has been widened because when you look at it in the movie, it looks like a one-lane bridge, and now it's a two-lane bridge. Hollywood movie history shot right here. So I'm right here at Comstock and Clements Road, and in one scene, the Charger comes right down here, turns to the left, and goes west. But just thought I should tell you, this is the area where they did a lot of the chase scenes, all these walnut orchards, and a lot of the scenes will go taking off through these little rows between the orchards, and uh, that's where they did a lot of chase scenes as well. I think in the movie they referred to this as the Sierra Walnut Patch or something like that. They said it was a wide area with a lot of tree coverage and not a lot of exits so that they could easily hide in here. And you can imagine there's plenty of places to shoot in here that I couldn't possibly identify. I think by now you could probably tell I'm just driving around in the areas where they did a lot of the chase scenes. There's a lot of walnut orchards through here. There's literally miles through these orchards of walnut trees and they don't ever seem to stop. Peter Fonda is just in total pursuit down this street and he comes up to two curves. This first one that goes off to the right and then one that goes off to the left. I believe the sheriff's car loses control on the second curve. But when I saw this in the movie, I said, I know where this is because I've been on this road a million times. And there it is. There's the second curve. Now this is also the kind of orchards that they pulled into. Uh, they pulled off during the chase and uh, they had some personal reflection time about what was going on. At least Deke did and so did Mary. I'm totally amazed that this place hasn't changed hardly any since the filming of the movie in the 70s. These trees, I think, some of them have been here all along. 
very thick, dense walnut trees. This location is probably the most important location of the whole film. So I'm right here at the intersection of Ketchum and Archerdale Road, and this is where the film starts. It's where the film ends with tragic results. So let's talk to you about the beginning of the film. You will see a train coming down these tracks right here. These tracks are no longer in use, but it's the end of the film that has the most shock and awe of this location. Peter Fonda thinks he's made his great escape from the law enforcement who has been chasing him in the entire film. And they finally get to this location and they're not paying attention and they hit a train head on. Ain't nothing gonna stop us! Oh. <laughs> it sure looks that way! I understand that some of the people who've weighed in on how this scene was done said that the train was moving much slower and the car was moving much slower and somehow there was a pulley system and there was a cable that was pulling the car and the cable ran under the tracks here but that's how they pulled the car into the train with perfect timing and then the pyrotechnics used to blow out the windows and then the flames and everything it's such a cool thing to be here because i've watched this movie numerous times and seen the the death car you know whole experience right here it's it's pretty amazing to actually stand here and see it for myself there's proof here that these tracks are no longer active there's just a bunch of garbage here but at one point i guess they used this train that went into i believe it was linden this is definitely one of the locations that i wanted to show you and i'm glad i got to do it I wasn't able to identify all the filming locations, such as the ranch and the barn where Deke made repairs to the damage in Paula. Swear to God, I won't come back! I also wasn't able to visit some of the locations which I knew about. For example, the Rushing Mountain Fire Lookout Tower near Jamestown, where this scene was shot. It's fairly common knowledge that most car scenes are accomplished by towing the car with the actors inside. Also, if you haven't figured it out, the dangerous car scenes were done without the highly paid actors inside. Take this scene where the charger goes through the mailboxes. Once we freeze this frame, you can clearly see that they used stunt doubles that resembled the actors. So we're gonna wrap up this episode of History Hunters and we hope that you appreciated the fact that we showed you a lot of the filming locations of the movie Dirty Mary Crazy Larry. But just to give you an update, Adam Rourke died in 1996 at the age of 58. He had a heart attack. Peter Fonda died in 2019 at the age of 79 from lung cancer. And Susan George is still living in the United Kingdom. She's 72 years old. As always, we would appreciate hearing a comment about our video. I'm curious if you've ever watched the movie Dirty Mary Crazy Larry. We would also love if you gave us a thumbs up and told your friends about History Hunters. Thank you so much. Yeah.